What's up, Prime Fam? So we're in the gym. We're on the Fusion program. This is week number two. I've been filming these vlogs like crazy, so I'm excited. We're taking through our strength day on the lower body muscle. So we're going squats, deadlift variation, and then a bunch of accessory work. We're gonna take you through the workout as always, kind of talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it. This is a fusion program from our group training programs offered over at prime-strength.com. If you wanna get in really good shape, it's a power building program combined with bodybuilding, powerlifting, training. The end of this program, you're gonna test one rep maxes, and in the beginning, you're gonna build a ton of muscle. So getting excited for today's lift, I got a set of six at RP8 today on squats, and then I have a set of three on beltless pause, deadlifts, we're gonna be showing you all of that. Warming up on squats right now. Uh, I just did a little mock meet test that was supposed to be at a real meet, and I compete in the USBA, so normally we use a squat bar. Uh, now that we're in the off season, I'm not gonna be competing in a meet for months on months. I get to go back to the stiff bar, and I actually feel stronger both on squats and deadlifts on the stiff bar. So I'm gonna kinda of talk about the differences between technique on a stiff bar, which is uh, in a Lyco power bar, compared to using a squat bar, like the Rogue squat bar or the Texas squat bar, which is a very thick, long bar that has a lot more whip. So gonna talk about the squat, talk about the deadlift, warming up right now, and I'll show you what I get on my top set. Okay guys, so uh, warming up here, we got 375 on the bar, 374 to the Lyco. So like I said, stiff bar, what I'm focusing on with my squats right here is getting my shoulders pinned back and down through a ton of external rotation, but ribs down. So I like to really crank my shoulders back like this, to create an extreme shelf and a lot of downward angle with my elbows and getting everything packed down and back in the scapula but ensuring I'm not overextending in my T-spine like this. So we want to keep the ribs down. When I'm on a squat bar, I actually purposely overextend my back. So you've got to know what bar you're on and what kind of technique works the best. Squat bars have so much whip and roll that if you don't overextend, you're gonna get eaten up really quick on your max attempts. That was the only thing that made that 644 possible. I'm a lot stronger on this bar because I can get into this position and not overextend as much. So really pinning the shoulders back and down, getting the rack position solid. Now I'm gonna breathe my ribs down, big breath in. And then right here, I'm gonna set shoulders again. Pin them back and down, ribs down. Big breath in. Not you. You're not baby. Spence is baby. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> Lock it in. Come on. Come on. One at a time. Let's go. Let's go use those legs. No. One at a time. Get it up. Easy. Come on. Here we go. Same thing. Come on. Big time. Three more. <gasps> Come on, rep that shit. Easy. Fight into it. Chest out. It's really easy. Good. Rep that shit. Three more. Come on. Hell yeah. 
They're getting easier. All right, I'm out. Let's go, come on. Legit pauses, keep them clean, come on. Yeah. Last one, super long. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, just finished up my beltless pause deadlifts. So I had a uh, beltless pause deadlift triple today with ascending sets up to an RP7. Uh, I hit up 300, God, what was that? 368 pounds, or 368 pounds? Whatever the conversion is. So I think it was about 568, really clean pauses. I wanted to ensure I was making every rep as long of a pause as possible and maintaining back position. The key with beltless pause deadlifts, what we're trying to get out of them from an adaptation standpoint is back rigidity. So I'm really fighting my low back into extension because without a belt and pausing in that position, really wanting it to fold over, I'm trying to keep extended out of that in the back extensors which helps with your lockout strength and your overall position and your competition style pull. So now I'm moving on to some elevated deadlifts. Kristen just hit these up too. I'm going uh, a little bit lighter on this week. We are progressing from last week. So last week I hit 551. This week I'm going 573. And we just got some sets of four, I believe, around RP6. If this is a little light, I might pump it up. But same goal here, fighting that back position. This elevated pull removes the quads out of the equation and allows me to focus on maintaining back and hip strength and position. So, gonna work on these, got a couple sets here and then some accessory work. same quad drive off the floor like I would get from a regular pole. So it actually feels way harder and it feels like a ton of posterior dominance. My low back just wants to fold over really hard. So that was really, really difficult. It's not always easier from elevation just because of the shortened range of motion. It changes biomechanics so much that it's making it harder on me. So I can even feel my core working really hard. Okay guys, so just finished the beltless elevated deadlifts. About four to five inches from the knee is the starting point on those, by the way, because I know someone's gonna ask. They went pretty good, they were really hard, really tiring. Now, I kind of strained my back a little bit on the first rep of the first set. Uh, the plates kind of twisted and rotated me, so I gotta be careful with the low back here. It's not too, too bad, but definitely like feeling it bending over, so I might skip out on one of the accessories. So right now, I got a super set of walking lunges with the barbell, which hands down is my favorite lunge variation. Now, you can do dumbbells, you can do a front rack position, you can do all sorts of variations with lunges, but I actually prefer the walking barbell ones the most because for me, I can get into the best cadence and rhythm on them. Otherwise, like lunges are a little bit awkward for me, especially from a hypertrophy standpoint. This is the one variant of them where I feel like I can just get a good pump in my legs and I take a wide, long step and keep that knee kind of tracking outward slightly and it feels amazing on both my glutes and on my quads. So I'm gonna hit those up and then I'm supposed to superset them with dumbbell RDLs. They probably will still, but I'm gonna go way lighter than last week. I was using the 90s on a really full range of motion. This week I might go super light just to kind of feel the back out or I might skip them all together because I wanna be smart. And if you're on the program, you feel a pain pop up, don't be an idiot and try to work through it and worsen the pain. If you can keep moving without pain, that's a great thing. But if you feel like it's gonna get worse from doing something, just stop there. It's better injury free. After that, we got some, uh, I think, GHR razors with leg curls. I'm gonna kind of zone in here on accessory work. I like to keep a very fast pace, keep the heart rate going, and just kind of stay moving. So I'm gonna listen to some music. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I'm exhausted. Just finished the walking barbell lunges and the dumbbell RDLs. So went a little bit lighter there, uh, really focused on just hip hinging, getting a lot of blood flow there. So like I said, kind of straight the back, trying to stay safe, making sure I don't aggravate anything. It actually feels better now that I got some blood flow there. Definitely gonna need to rehab this the next couple days. So usually whenever I get a little strain, a little tear, something like that, I, I do high frequency movement. So tomorrow I'll be doing really, really light hip hinging. So even just grabbing some water jugs at home and doing a hundred total reps of hip hinging, getting a lot of blood flow and movement in the pattern that's a little aggravated without inciting more pain. And usually when I do this, within a week or less, I'm usually back to normal unless it's a severe one. So uh, not too worried about it. Heart rate's through the roof right now. About to move on to, uh, we have some GHR razors and I think leg extensions. I gotta check the program. So I'll film that too. Also superset. I love antagonistic supersets. So, you know, one pressing with the leg and one pulling or curling with the leg is kind of the key here. Okay, so uh, instead of leg extensions and GHR razors, I'm actually gonna opt for a heel elevated um, hack squat here. And so we're gonna lift it up off the ground with a plate, which just gives us some more range of motion because this kind of bottoms out. And then I'm wearing my heel and I'm trying to stand as narrow and close together as I can, this time without my heel coming up. So if you watch a hypertrophy day, you'll know that I wasn't minding my heel lifting up a little bit. Uh, you can elevate it off a plate, like a small plate to lift the heels even more, or you can just press off the toes. Contrary to what people think, as long as you're slow, controlled, and light, that's not gonna be inherently bad for your knees. In this case, I'm opting for a little bit of what I'll call strength carryover in the sense of mobility. I wanna use this to mobilize my ankles a little bit. This is actually the best way to get mobility at the ankles, to load it and stretch it into position with load. So I'm gonna get you know 10 to 12 reps here, and then some leg curls, doing them back and forth. For whatever reason, the leg extension machine was hurting my back more than this was. So opting for this instead of leg extensions. So we're gonna go narrow, feet about here, toes slightly out, just like I would in a squat. And I'm gonna try to hit the bottom without my heel coming up, really stretching those ankles out and mobilizing as best I can. And as I kind of warm up through this, I might move the feet back a little bit if they're feeling mobile. I'm gonna go a little bit actually further up. See how now I can do it fast? That's because my ankles are kind of loosening up in the movement. Oh, it is burning the shit out of the quads. What's going on guys? Before you get out of here, I want to tell you about our three group coaching programs over at prime-strength.com. The first one is Fusion. That's the power building routine that I'm running this season. And the other two are powerlifting programs aimed at competition prep or off season. Now, besides just the programs, when you sign up, you'll also get access to the video database where we have extensive tutorials on advanced technique, strength tips, hypertrophy tips, nutrition videos, everything you can think of. And then you also get a weekly Q&A with your coach, which is me. Every week you get to ask me questions and I answer them in video format. And then lastly, the newest addition to the website is the Prime Fam Forum, where you can connect with other members, send videos and pictures back and forth. It's a really fun time. And you get all of this for a very affordable price of just $45 a month. If you're interested, click the link in the description box down below. I'm going to be running the Fusion program this season. I hope to see you guys there, and I hope to see you in the forum.